Good morning, colleagues. Um, my name is Raisibe Madiho. I'm the manager in the CPD and registrations unit, and I'm the one who will be taking you through the class today, and we will do so shortly. We'll just wait for one minute for everyone to join in, and then we can start.
Good morning, colleagues, and apologies for what has happened. I do realize that I was muted. I had thought we are together all this time, so I profusely apologize for what went on. Uh, can somebody please confirm if you are now able to hear me? Okay, thank you, Natalie. Um, I'm sorry, I'll just start over because I don't know when I got muted and what happened. Um, I'll introduce myself once again. My name is Raisibe Madiwa. I'm a manager in the CPD and registration unit, and I will be taking you through today's master class. What we will discuss in today's session is the CPD requirements, wherein we will go through the annual declarations, how that is done, uh, designation of persons, what does it mean to be designated and what do you get to be designated as? CPD essentials, this is where in we discuss the competency standards, the domains and the competencies, frequently asked questions and the facts. Um, this is where in you will be advised to then familiarize yourself with the competency standard document that was published by Council in 2018, which will guide you on which um, domains, which CPD to follow in your role as a pharmacist. How to learn? In here, we will do what constitute a good CPD activity, learning activities, and evidence. So we will discuss what is evidence and what is it that you need to do with your evidence. Compliance and archives. Here we will then go through what is it that you need to do with your CPD activities and what happens to them <clears throat> after you have submitted them. The highlights will take you through the highlights that we do have. And then after that, we will open the floor for questions, suggestions, and discussions. And then what are the CPD requirements? So Council has published in 2019, December, a board notice that then said all pharmacists as of the 1st of January of 2020 will be mandated, will be compelled to comply with CPD requirements. And those CPD requirements are that you complete your annual declaration on the 1st of February of each year. You record at least a minimum of six CPD activities on the CPD system by the 31st of December of each year. <clears throat> and then you, you maintain an electronic portfolio of evidence. This electronic portfolio of evidence, please do not upload it on the system. You keep it in case Council requests that of you. Council is not doing that at the moment, but it is something that uh, needs to be kept in case it is requested from you. And then also, 
on the annual declaration, you need to familiarize yourself then with the competency standard. And this will be the way that you will know what is then expected of you, what is it that you will then need to do, and what applies to your line of work. Because we do have a lot of pharmacists that are asking us what is it that they need to do if they work in certain sectors. And then as a result, it's, it's easier if you then go through the competency standards, then you will be able to know what is it that is expected of you. It makes it easier that way. So your annual declaration is based on the competency standards for pharmacists, which I have said that is a document that was published by council in 2018. It is available on the SAPC website for you to read and familiarize yourself with it. In that document, you find there are domains. We do have six domains that are there. And these domains are then categorized into competency standards. And the competency standards do have behavioral statements. So it's very important that you familiarize yourself with this so that you know you get to understand what is it that is expected of you. Once you have been through those and you understand, then you can complete your annual declaration. Yes. And on the annual declaration, you will be expected to go through these competencies one by one, and then you choose if it's something that you have you never do. There is an option there for things you never do. Then you click on, I never do this. If it's something that you do some of the time, you will choose that option. If it's something you do most of the time, you will choose that option. So for example, if you want to declare yourself as a non-practicing pharmacist, you will then go through all these competency standards and in each and every one of them, choose I never do this. At the end of that session, then the system will declare you as a non-practicing pharmacist. But it asks you, it tells you, you are declared as a non-practicing pharmacist. Do you agree or disagree? If you feel you disagree, then you disagree. And then you can go through it again and, <clears throat> and designate yourself correctly. If you have chosen that you do one of, of those things or more, then it will designate you as a practicing pharmacist. And all practicing pharmacists are then expected to comply with the CPD requirements which are completion of the six CPD activities for that year. So a practicing pharmacist is a pharmacist that is registered with cancer and providing one or more of the services or the acts that are related to the scope of practice of a pharmacist. And non-practicing pharmacists are those pharmacists that are registered with cancer but are not providing any, not one, of the acts or services pertaining to the scope of practice of a pharmacist. And if you designated yourself as non-practicing, then you cannot be found working in a pharmacy. You cannot be found providing any of the acts pertaining to the scope of practice of a pharmacist. So here we're going to take a few seconds to familiarize you with the competency framework. This, you find it also in the guidance document and the guidance document is available on the SAPC website. If you go under registered persons and you go to CPD, you will find a whole lot of documents there that are guiding you. The guidance document is one of them. And the important terms for us to remember is the competency standards and behavioral statements. So all the domains in the competency standard documents do have introduction, and that introduction there is what is explaining to you what is expected of you if you say that 
you are competent in that particular domain. <clears throat> so the competency standards do have the introduction to the domain. How does the domain apply to you? It, you get, it gets explained to you. The competencies and behavioral statements. The behavioral statements are divided into three levels. The entry level, which is when you are new in that particular field of work. Not that you are new as a pharmacist, but you are new in that particular category of pharmacy or that particular competency is something that you were not competent in before. And intermediate is when you are in the middle, you are not so new, but yet you are not that advanced. And advanced is where in you are completely comfortable with that competency standard. For example, if uh, you are like me and you have been working for a statutory body for a long time, you will be familiar with development of policies, you will be familiar with um, creating standard operating procedures, you will be familiar with policy development. And if you were to do other things, perhaps in a competency that's more related to manufacturing or wholesale, then you would be new in that field and you can comfortably choose entry level because then you are still learning. So the six domains that we do have are public health, safe and rational use of medicines and medical devices, supply of medicines and medical devices, organization and management skills, professional and personal practice, education, critical analysis and research. And that's why we say that it's important for you to go through all these domains their competencies and all the behavioral statements so that you can understand which one applies to you in particular. I can promise you now that when Cantal drafted this competency standard document, they did benchmarking with other statutory bodies in the country, with other regulatory bodies that are regulating the profession of pharmacy in other countries to make sure that they come with the best document to accommodate all the five sectors of pharmacy in South Africa. So domain one, we will just take one competency and use that as an example just made to make you familiar with the domain. So domain one is the public health domain. And this one, if you want to know if does it apply to you, this domain applies to all pharmacists whose practice includes the promotion of health and wellness through the provision of health care information and education to the public and other members of the health care team. So if you find yourself providing health care information to anyone, it could be the public, it could be your colleagues, then you know that this applies to you. And then in this domain, the competencies are the promotion of health and wellness, medicine information. This could be you providing medicine information or developing the medicine information, professional health advo and health advocacy, health economics, epidemic and disaster management, primary health care. And in 2020, we found ourselves living in very interesting times with experiencing the pandemic, a first pandemic for some of us. And that's when we learned a whole lot of things and it had something to do with this domain in particular. So the behavioral statements here, we chose behavioral statements for the entry level for level one, which are provide advice on health promotion, provide advice on disease prevention and control, provide advice on healthy lifestyle, participate in public health campaigns. So this document, if you can see here, it is asking you, does this standard form part of my current practice of pharmacy? And you answer yes or no. 
you find this document, it's there for all the domains in the guidance document. It's, I think it's an extra B in the guidance document. So it, it, gui it guides you to go through all the domains and check if they do actually apply to you or not. So if you have not yet done so, you can do that. It will really help you a lot to do so. And then what are the frequently asked questions? We do have a lot of pharmacists that feels that CPD for pharmacists shouldn't really apply to them as they feel that, yes, they are not denying that they are pharmacists, but they feel because they don't work directly with patients, then they should not be mandated, they should not be obliged to comply. But then um, CPD is not meant for helping the patients only. It is there so that as a pharmacist, you can develop your own self. You can identify your own knowledge, skills, gaps, and make sure that you fill those in a way that will uplift the dignity of the profession. So we will have somebody saying, I only develop regulations. I only train pharmacists and assistants. I only do research. I never get to talk to patients at all. Does this really apply to me? And the fact is, it does apply to you. Pharmacy practice is not restricted to the provision of direct clinical care. It can include working in direct non-clinical care relationship with clients, working in management, policy development, regulatory advisory, research, you, you could be working anywhere, training, but you still need to make sure that you learn. You still need to make sure that you fill in your knowledge gaps in order to uplift yourself as a person and uplift the dignity of the profession. What you can do is to go through the competencies and the document and check which ones apply to you or which ones are you most interested in, in order for you then to know which CPDs to choose for the year. How do I learn? So before we dive into how do you learn, let's first define CPD. What is continuous professional development? So this is the process in which a person registered with council as a pharmacist uh, maintains and enhances their competence throughout their professional career. In, it encompasses a range of activities, including continuing education and supplementary training. CPD enables registered persons to develop in their area of practice and demonstrate competence. So, as much as we know that you were already developing in your area of practice, but cancer is requesting of you to demonstrate your competence by then logging in onto the CPD system and reflecting on what you have learned. <clears throat> the CPD submission process, this can only be done online, as we have said. And you need to complete six CPD entries on the online system. And this can be done by choosing two different cycles. We do have two different cycles to choose from, which are the four-step and the two-step cycle. I'm going to take you through this in detail so that we can all understand what is it that is expected of us. And please, please, please do not upload your evidence. Do not attach your evidence on the system when you complete your CPD activities. We do have a four-step CPD cycle, which council does not limit you the number of CPD entries that you can upload on the system. You can do as much as you like using this step. It's all up to you. This 
step in particular, the, this cycle, it requires prior planning. It requires you to outline because it has four steps and you can submit as much as you like using this step. And then we do have the two step cycle, which is the easy one, it's instant. And in this step, you are limited to three activities per year, only three using this step. And it does not require any further process. It could be where you were in training already. Uh, perhaps you came here to learn about CPD, but you realize that you have learned something else. Then you can use that for your two-step cycle. So the four-step cycle is the one wherein there is the reflection step, there is the planning step, the implementation step, and the evaluation. So what I am going to do is to log in onto the system so that we can go through these steps together for us to make sure that you live here understanding what is it that you are expected to do. So I'm, I'm going to quickly log in. Okay, so this is um, what the profile looks like after you have logged in. And then you go to CPD, the CPD online system, and then you click continue professional development. At a glance, if you had already done your annual declaration for the year, then it brings you to this screen over here. And if you can see here, it is showing that entries um, and it's saying that I have done um, awaiting submission, there is one submitted for compliance, there is four. And what you see here are the entries for the current year. So if you had already submitted entries for 2020, they will not show here they will then show under the annual declaration. So when you click under your annual declaration, they will show here the year, it will say 2020, and then it will show you the CPD activities that you have submitted for the year. It is showing here that I have submitted 11, which are already archived, and there's one that is awaiting submission. This one is awaiting submission because I restored it from archives yesterday, so that's why it's doing that. And then for 2020, it is showing that I've um, submitted for compliance four, and then I have archived one. And I need you to note that if you archive your own CPD activities after you have submitted them, we will not be able to see those. They will not count towards your compliance. So please make sure that you don't archive any CPD activities that you have submitted. Council does archive the CPD activities for those who comply, 
once a year. We do um, archive them by the 31st of December just to open way for you to be able to submit a, a CPD activities for the upcoming year. But please, please, please do not archive your own CPD activities if you still feel that you need those. If you don't need them, rather delete them. So the four-step CPD submission starts here at reflection. So you go there because I've submitted CPD entries before, then that's why it looks like that. It already has those that I've submitted here. But you go to identify a new learning unit. So here, this is the first step, which then you're going to identify what is it that you need to learn. You reflect on your practice and you see, okay, I need to learn this particular thing. And you decide on it. So today, for example, we can use me preparing for this session as an example. So we're going to choose a domain that is more related to this. So we will choose one under education, research, and critical analysis. And then on the competencies, there is education and training policy, provision of education and training, and that is what we're doing today. So we will choose 6.2. It's the one that is most related. And then we need to select a title. So when you do a title, your title should not just be a copy and paste of the domain or the domain competency or the behavioral statement. It should be something that is actually related to what you're doing and it actually talks to you and has meaning. So for example, here we'll be preparing for the master class. And then what was the learning trick? Was it appraisals? Was it an audit? Was it competencies? Critical incidents? Feedback from colleagues? Feedback from service users? Personal interest? Were you reading a journal and realized you actually needed to learn things? Talking to colleagues once more? And then here for me, it would be feedback from service users. And this would have been triggered by the fact that you were not compliant in your CPD activities. We went on a campaign to call you and we got feedback from you that actually made us wanted to have this class with you. And then under learning relation, is this related to your current role? Is it a new role? Or is it both? So for me, it will be a current role. Learning initiation, what initiated this training? Was it your employer or contracting information? Was it users of your products? Was it your colleagues, your peers, or was it just you? In this case, I would say users of the product. And then here they say, describe the learning need that you have identified to improve your knowledge and skills and what you hope to achieve after addressing this learning need. So for example, you could be having different of them for various reasons. And then you're going to outline them here. What is it um, that you're hoping to achieve after addressing this need. And what I'm hoping to achieve in this instance is that you comply to your requirements. But then um, if it's you at home, you will have various reasons for why you wanted to achieve this. We're just using this exam as an example so that we do not waste time. And then it takes you to save. When you click on save, then it asks you it tells you that your title has been saved. Would you like to continue to plan it? And let's say on that particular day you are rushed. You don't have time to continue anywhere. And then you will say, no, I don't want to continue. And what it will do is that it will save it here and leave it as incomplete. 
And when you come to click here at a later stage, maybe the next day or a week later, then it will either ask you to edit. If you edit, it takes you to the reflection step. But if you don't want to edit what you did previously, you just proceed then to the next step. So this is the next step. But you could have chosen to just continue to planning earlier on instead of saving it. It's all up to you. I'm just saying that there is an option if, if you're too busy and don't have time to finish it all at once. You can do it in, in bits and pieces and the system will save it for you. So here the mode of learning. So the mode of learning, we do have a slide in, in the presentation that will address this, but we will also address it here. We do have non-measurable uh, mode of learning, and this could be sitting in a seminar, could be listening to radio, listening to TV, and they teach you things that you needed to learn, or perhaps you went on someone's YouTube channel or the YouTube channel that the South African Pharmacy Council has. There's a whole lot of things you can learn there. Or you read a journal, you read a book, or you attended a conference. So that's an unmeasurable CPD uh, learning activity. Or it could be a measurable one wherein you decide to enroll yourself for a short course, and that short course um, would be of the duration less than six months. Or it could be structured, and this is if you have enrolled yourself for a course that has the duration of seven months or more. That, that is what we call structured. It could be a diploma, it could be PCDT, it could be any um, learning activity that is more than seven months in duration. In this case, we will take the non-measurable. <clears throat> and then the primary activity, you do have options to choose. And if you don't want to choose any of these options, you can select other. And then this will compel you to specify what you mean by other. In this case, we will take self-study. And then we will, um, there are dates here. There is a start date in which the training was done. And then there is an end date. So depending on how long this particular activity took you, then you choose your dates there. And then here you expected to briefly describe the reasoning behind your planning session. So what is it that you have planned to do and why did you plan to do it that way? So I had planned to provide a master class. Uh, and then you write more reasons what you did and how you planned on doing that and then you save. And when you save, then it takes you to the implementation step. You click yes. And then this step is wherein you put in your learning activities that you have planned into action. So what was the duration of your learning activity? Was it less than 30 minutes? Was it 30 to 60 minutes? Was it 60 to 90 minutes? How long was it? Then you can choose here. And then the achievement date, when did you achieve it? Then you choose a date that's applicable to you. And then here you describe what you have done. What action did you take in order to achieve your specified outcome? Did you read a book? Did you speak to a colleague? Did you attend a conference? Did you um, enroll yourself for a class? What is it that you have done? So you will outline all that here. And then you save so that it can then take you to the evaluation step. And then on the evaluation step, this is where then you reflect on what is it that you have done with what, with what you have learned. What did you do with the skills and the knowledge that you have acquired? So did you meet your objective in full? Let's say it was fully met. 
have you applied what you have learned and where did you apply it? So in this case, I'll choose in my workplace. And then here it says, describe providing examples, how you have applied what you have learned, including feedback on the impact of your learning and possible next step. So here you are evaluating what you have learned and the possible next step for me in this example will be me providing you with this actual class. And if I feel that uh, providing you with that class still did not work, it still did not improve your compliance, then what would I do? So this is what I will be reflecting on to say, I prepared for the class, the class was provided. But then a week or so later, if I find out that it still didn't work, what is it that I will do? So you reflect on everything in here. You write all the things. And then here, if you feel that you want to come back at a later stage and just read it one more time before you can submit, you can save it and leave it at that. Or if you feel that you want to submit it but you want to review it at a later stage you can select self-review and then also there's an option for peer review if you would like for someone else to review your work this should be a colleague who is a pharmacist and that pharmacist should have completed their annual declaration for the year if that person did not complete their annual declaration the system will not allow you to choose them so I'll click on this one for submit for peer review so that you can be able to see what happens here. So you get here and then it says, for me, it's saying peer review and it's saying select. I've already um, assigned people as my peer reviewers, but that's not what we're doing today. So if, if you had already done that, you will just choose one of them and then you can submit to them. But then you can also have the option to click here in order to add someone. Then you put in a P number in here so that you can choose your peer. So it will give you that person's name over here. And what happens is after you have clicked on to say add peer assessor, it does send an SMS to that person. So there's no forcing a person to be your peer if they do not want to. It sends them an SMS to say, Receiver has selected you as their peer reviewer or peer assessor. Uh, please log in on the council system and accept. And if they don't want, they can decline it. And also, you will not get penalized if Receiver decides to decline you as a peer, as, as, as your peer assessor, or if she decides to accept but ends up not reviewing your work, you will not be penalized for that. So once you have then added this person as your peer reviewer, you need to come here and activate them. If you don't activate that person, they will then not be able to view your CPD entries. If you activate them, they will be able to do so. And if you at a later stage want to then deactivate that person, you can just log in and click on peer review. And then you will find your peer reviewers there. Sorry, under my peers. So you go under my peers and then you find the people that you have selected as your peers to review your work and you can deactivate them so that they don't ever get to see your work again. And then if someone has selected you to be their peer reviewer, you go under peer review, and then you will be able to see them here. So this is because I've already accepted this person, but if it was before I had accepted them, it will then give me that option to accept or decline them. But then if you want to view their work, you go to view, and then it allows you to view their work here. 
and if there's something that they have actually assigned to you to to review it will have a button here that will say review then you click on it then it takes you through that person's work in order for you to review it so this is how the the four step cycle that that's how it that's how it works then once you have submitted it you are able to go and check under my submissions then it will show you what is it that you have submitted for compliance and if under your submission you having things that are say awaiting submission please know that those ones in particular are not yet submitted and they do not count as CPD activities under your profile because if it's still awaiting submission, cancel will not have it. So make sure that as much as it says complete, 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 it also says submitted for compliance. And also another option that you have is to delete entries. So for example, this one is an entry that I've entered because we are practicing and I'm able to delete it if, if I really want to delete it. There's a delete button here. So you can click here to say delete. It is asking you if you are sure that you want to delete and then you say continue. And then it deletes it. You see it's gone. It has deleted it. And then if you have one that is saying awaiting submission and you know that you have done a thorough job on it and you want to submit it for compliance, then you can click on submit for compliance. And then here it gives you a choice to submit for peer review if you would like to, or just submit for compliance. And also what I need you to note is that if you have submitted things for peer review, and as I've said, and your peer just ends up not having to review it, you will not be penalized for that because that submission comes in as a parallel submission to your peer and then to the council systems for your compliance so it does not work against you and then we will now do the two-step cpd activity and that step you find it here where it says two-step cpd activity and this one, I like it because it's the quick, quick, quick thing to do. So here, let's say um, you are sitting in this today's class and you have actually learned something about it and you want to quickly just reflect on what is it that you have learned. Okay, and then we choose a domain. So we need to choose a domain that is more related to what is it that you have learned. And in this case, we will choose again on the education, education and training, provision of education and training, practice embedded education and workplace education, gap analysis, critical analysis, research, supervision of other researchers, collaborative work, and then I'll choose this one. And then as I've already explained what the mode of learning means, we will choose here non-measurable. And then we will choose, let's say on the job learning. And then now you go to step number two. So on step number two here, you need to select the duration of your learning and then you choose the achievement date and leave it at today's date. So here they say, describe what you have done. That is the action taken to achieve the specified outcome. So I attended a master class. And then you state all the other things that you have done here in this column. And then was your learning objective made? Was it met fully? Was it made partially? And where did you apply it? Did you apply it or you have not yet applied it? You choose whichever is applicable to you. And then here they say, describe providing examples, how you have applied what you have learned, including feedback on the impact of your learning and possible next step. So this is where you will outline everything that 
you have learned, how you applied it, and what is it that you want to do with it in future. So you outline everything there. And then you submit for compliance or for peer review, or you can review it at a later stage yourself, or if you want to save it so that you want to read it before you submit, you can also do so. It is all up to you. So I'll, I'll save this one. And also, even the two step, it still allows you to delete it if you feel that you then need to delete that. So because this was for the purposes of this training, I'll delete it so that I don't get confused at a later stage. And then another thing that I wanted to show you whilst we're still on this website is where to find your archived items. So in case you archive your CPD activities in error, you go to dashboard. And then here is where you are able to also see my submissions. If you click under my submissions here, it shows you everything that you have submitted. And then here, if you want to see the CPD cycle, if you want to go through the whole thing and how it works, you find it there. And then if you want to see the domains and the competencies, you find all the domains and the competencies here. If you click on it, it, it opens up the whole thing. Then you are able to go through all the domains and the competencies. And then archives. So under archives, this is what happens. Archive is the older entries. Like I said, we as, uh, in the Office of the Registrar, we will archive this for you once a year on the 31st of December. And what we have archived, please do not restore. If you restore it, then it stops counting for that particular year that you had entered it for. So if we archived any entries for you, do not come here and restore them. And please avoid archiving your own entries. If you don't want an entry anymore, rather delete it. So if you archived your entry in error, you can come here and then restore that entry. You click here where it says restore the entry, and then it will restore it for you. So let's do it so that you can be able to see. So you see here, when, when I click on restore, then it takes me through this whole thing. This means I had not filled in. It, does, it usually doesn't, it doesn't delete anything that you have written. And then if you're restoring it, it takes through all the steps. And then you can be able to then restore that entry. Okay, thank you. I'll then go back to the actual presentation. I hope I hope the going through the system had made it easier for you. Okay, we have done what constitute a good CPD activity. We have done this through on the system. It needs to have a learning title. It should have a learning need, learning method or activity, and it should have an outcome. So this is what we went through in details when we were on the website. And I've also explained to you what the learning activities are but we will just recap. We do have the non-measurable learning activities, which is your self-study, case study, attending a conference and other things, maybe reading or speaking to a colleague. We have the measurable ones, which are short courses. If you review an article, or you are invited as a guest speaker. And then we do have the structured ones, which could be a diploma, postgraduate studies, could even be a PCDT, for example. 
And then we get to the electronic portfolio of evidence. What is it that council expects in that portfolio if we request it from you? We request for it to be valid. It should be for that year. So if, if we're requesting portfolio of evidence from you for 2020, we don't expect you to give things that you have done in 2019, 2018, or 2017. We expect things that were done in that current year. It has to be relevant and related to that particular CPD. And please, please do not upload it on the system. It should, it should not be uploaded on the system at all. So here is just to reiterate that it must relate to learning during the current year, can be any document that you have acquired. So for example, if you were preparing a policy document, your portfolio of evidence could be what you were, the, the, the learning material you used in order to prepare for that policy document and the actual policy document that you have prepared. If you are writing an SOP and you first read the company policies, you perhaps read the policies or the guidelines by the Department of Health or the minimum standards that pharmacy council has set out for pharmacies, you can use that as your evidence. But please, please make sure that you don't upload it on the system. It's something that you should keep in case it's requested of you. And then this, um, I did show you this portion where it then shows you your CPD activities, your annual declaration, and for which year it was. And then the most important thing is that council does not work on a points system. So if you attended a course or you attended something and it was perhaps allocated points, council will not uh, be able to do anything with those points. What do we expect of you is that you log in online and you enter your CPD activities. You enter what you have learned, you design your own titles, and that is a way in which council can assess that you have learned. There will be no assessment for competence, but we only assess for compliance with the CPD requirements. And there are no third party entries that will be accepted. So in here, we want you to know that it's a professional misconduct if you give somebody your login details for them to log in on the system for you and submit your CPD entries for you. You need to do it yourself. And also, people that have designated themselves as non-practicing pharmacists needs to know that they cannot be found practicing the scope or any acts related to the scope of practice of a pharmacist. So if you do designate yourself as non-practicing, know that you should not be found anyway in a pharmacy or practicing as a pharmacist. Council does encourage lifelong learning, and this is there to uplift the dignity of the profession, to safeguard our public, and to ensure that as a pharmacist, you are kept abreast, you are kept educated, and you understand the, your competencies in order for you to be able to offer valuable services. Cantel did um, develop a registration app for us, and this app is available on um, Play Store, it's available on the Google Play Store, it's available on the Apple Store. We were having challenges with it yesterday and IT was working on it in order to restore it. So if you don't find it, please bear with us, it, it will eventually be there. And this app does allow for the digital registration cards, it's there and you are able to take a screenshot of it in case um, inspector comes in and request of it or somebody requested from you at all. 
please make sure that you upload your pictures there. Upload a very beautiful identity size picture so that you can easily be identified. Amend your personal details also using this app at your own convenient. And also this app also does have access to the CPD system. So if you would like to submit your CPD activities using the app, by all means, please do so. I will now open the floor for questions, discussions, and suggestions. I see already that there are hands, so um, I'll call out your names in no particular order, and when I do, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Mia? Hi, how are you? Good, thanks, and you? Okay, I've done my CPD submissions, and your, your presentation was fantastic, but it still says I'm not compliant. How do I, how does that happen? That's strange. How many did you submit? I submitted about seven of them. When were they submitted? I submitted last year th about four, and then this year I did about three. Uh, if you can please send us your P number so that we can be able to check if perhaps there's any error that had happened in the system. It, it, it shouldn't have done that. Okay. So do I give it to you now? Can I put it on the chat now? You can do so, or you can send us an email to the email address that was provided in the letters. I did. I did send it to you. You did. And oh, I then we will, we will definitely get back to you because we did receive a lot of emails in there, but we are going through them, and we will definitely get back to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nelisiwe? Okay, we will skip minutes. Morning. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I'm well, thank you. Uh, can you maybe just, because uh, you were doing that second part of the two-step, I got lost somewhere. Can you just maybe make it's just a small example on that one, the second part of the two-step? Because I'm, I, I want to do those ones, but I, I struggle on the content sometimes. Okay, perhaps please explain where you got lost and what do you mean you struggle on the content? Nelisiwe? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know where to start. Okay, let's skip my question. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry that I couldn't understand you there. Karuna? Uh, good morning. Um, I, I've done my entries last year already. Um, I think in about October or November. But I think uh, it was when I went to check to now and after I received notification from council that I did not do my CPD, I've realized it was all archived. I'm not sure how that happens because these are the first CPDs that we submitted. So what I've done is restored them. I don't know if that's the right thing to do because those were the initial CPDs that were given in. And now I've seen it's, um, it's showing as uh, submitted for compliance. Oh, okay. You, I, I don't know what happened. If you could have possibly archived it erroneously, because if, if it's cancelled that archived those CPD activities, they still show on on the reports that we draw. So I don't know if perhaps uh, you you could have archived them in error. But thank you for submitting again, and we do apologize for the inconvenience that it could have caused. Then I have messaged on this chat uh, with my P number to just ask you to review my stuff again. But it's showing submitted for compliance, so is it fine now? Yes, it, it should be, but you can leave your P number and then we will check it again. I've done, I've done it on this chat, so I'm sure that should be fine for you, am I right? 
Thank you. Yes, we will we will check it out. Thank you for the workshop. Yes. Thank you. Andres. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning. I just have two questions. Uh, I have submitted some of my activity in 2020, but it disappeared. Maybe I did it wrong. <laughs> Probably that's the reason. How do I now go and submit again for 2020? Is there a way to do it? Uh, you are saying that you have submitted, but it seems to have disappeared. Correct, yeah. Is it available under archives? I saw something under um, availability, but um, I can do nothing with it. So I should go back to 2020 and redo everything. Um, That's my question. How do I do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding it strange that you have submitted and it disappeared and it's yeah. not even there. Are you able to send us an email, then we can check what's going on on the system and see how best we can assist. I actually did send a mail um, and had no response. The other question I wanted to ask is that uh, I'm more in the academic area and uh, I do peer reviews and also write international protocols. Um, my problem is writing an international protocol um, takes quite some time, but if I submit that I've done that, I get one or two CPD points. Uh, I don't know, is there another system how it works? Uh, I think what you need to do then in that case is be more creative with your titles because uh -huh. you are not obliged to submit just one entry then if you feel that you have learned different things in, in yeah. that one activity. So you can have different titles you okay. can submit more than one entry using the same domain, the same competency okay. standard, the same behavior. So you you can get creative with your titles there and, and do those submissions. Okay, right. I'll do it like that then. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Salome? Hello, hello. Thanks, thanks, Raisi, for the for the good presentation. It really enlightened, I think, a lot of us. Um, my question is, okay, I'm guilty. I never submitted any CPDs in 2020, but now the letter that came said I I have not complied to sub CPDs for 2020. I did submit in 2021 for 2020 but now you know obviously i'm gonna I'm going, I'm going to submit another four my issue is that how will council know that i'm submitting for 2020 because they will reflect as though they are for 2021 um, and 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 again my second question is that because they they said to us if i don't do it by the 30th i will be designated as a non-practicing which will have a huge impact on me but I just want to know that if I submit the four, should I take it? Will you come back before the date year to say you are fine or I must just wait for the letter that will go either way? Okay, so what will happen is um, because you were given grace period, the CPD activities that you submit now in 2021, if you are not yet compliant with the 2020 requirements will then count for 2020. So if you submit six now, then you will be compliant for 2020. And yes, they will still show under 2021 because they show by date. So there's no way that they will be backdated to 2021. But on our side, we have a system of working it out. So there's no need for you to worry about that. Just make sure that you submit six by the 30th and yes, we will not send you communication before the 30th to say if you comply or not. We will only send communication after the 30th um, to those that comply to say you comply and to those that do not comply to say you are now designated as non-practicing. So please make sure that you comply by then. Okay, I must just submit my six and just say in my head I complied. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Leah? Uh, good morning, Rasibe. Thank you very much for the presentation and good morning to all the colleagues. 
Um, yeah. I've emailed council um, numerous times just to, to get some clarity on what is expected of me for the 2020 CPDs, but I imagine you guys have been inundated with emails. So that's understandable, and I'm grateful for this platform that I can use now to ask the question. But are there allowances for people who might have been inactive for the most of 2020? Um, I was on maternity leave, and because I'm in academia, I'm quite privileged in that I can get more extended leave than most other occupations. So I was off from March to December 2020, and that is why I didn't submit CPD entries for that year, because I was not active um, for you know, so many months. Is it still required of me to submit six or um, none at all or fewer than that? Just some advice so that I know what council expects of me with regards 2020. Thanks, Rasibe. Thank you. Um, when that happens, when you are non-practicing for so long, uh, you should have marked yourself as non-practicing for that period then in that case, we do prorate your CPD requirements. What we do is, because we're saying six for a year, then it means it's one every second month. So, for example, if you were not practicing for six months, then we reduce three from your CPD requirements for a year. But that only applies if you had done so on your annual declaration, if you had declared yourself as non-practicing for that period then council will know that you were not practicing for this nine months. Therefore, for that year, you are only required to comply with one CPD requirement. So um, are you, say, you are saying, I hear you are saying that you send us an email. We will check that. We will engage with you. But because you had not uh, marked yourself as designated yourself as non-practicing, that is why there is that requirement of you that you complete six. Okay. Oh, okay, so I should have notified council when I was planning to take maternity leave. All right, Rasibu, so should I just submit six then? Please, yes. Okay, all right, right. will do. Thank you. Thank you. Abdul? Hi, Rasibu, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the lovely presentation. I retired in 2018 and haven't been practicing since. So if I want to go and register myself now as non-practicing, how do I go on, to the, on the website and do that? You log in on the register system, you go under CPD, and then yes. when you do your annual declaration on the competencies, yes. choose each and every one of them as I never do this. Then okay. at the end of it, it will mark you as non-practicing. Yes. And and if I'm non-practicing, would I still have to do some CPDs? No, you are not obliged to do to comply with CPD activities the, with the requirements if you are non-practicing. All right. And what happens if I want to practice again at some stage later? What would, what would I have to do? There is an application form on the system. So you fill in that application form. It has a fee. I think the fee was 365. I'm not sure if it's still the same. So then yes. you will pay in that fee and then we can um, reset your designation status. Okay, thank you very much. So at this point in time, if I still do the six CPDs and submit before the 30th of June, then I will still be regarded as a practicing pharmacist. That's correct, sir. Thank you very much, Rasibe. Thank you. Thank you, Hi. Krasinda? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I'm just going to... Hey, I didn't... I'm just going to nah. repeat the question that was asked before. I've submitted six um, assignment CPDs, so that will go towards 2020. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And then um, when I submit the next six, will that be the, for 2021? That is correct, yes. Okay, thank you. And just to confirm, is it six or nine that one has to do per year? It's only six. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. That's, all, that, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Will you let me?
Buyo, let you please go ahead. Um, okay, we will skip uh, Buyo Lutu because it seems she cannot hear me. Lucretia? Good morning. Good I morning. want to find out what the process flow is from the time you hit submit for compliance. Because as it stands, it doesn't give me a level of comfort as I can't view any anything submitted under entries by status or entries by outcome. All I see is one in brackets next to entries by domain. That's that's what happens because you we are not yet assessing your entries for competence. That is why they will not show under outcome because they, they, they don't get assessed for competence. But once you have submitted they also then do show under the council system as submitted for compliance. So the moment you submit, we, we also do receive them on our side. It might um, have a, 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 a perhaps a period of up to 24 hours before we get to see those, but then we, we do get to see them. So there are, there are no delays. And on my side, will I see it under my submissions? Yes, you will be able to see it under my submissions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Lucinda? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I submitted um, five CPDs ma for the year 2020. And then I did one CPD in 2021, which applies to 2020. And then I accidentally archived one CPD. So for 2020 under the dashboard, it shows that I've, I've submitted four CPDs. And then the one which I've archived, I'm unable to restore because it says it's locked. So I did a new entry, completely a copy and paste as a new entry. So there's two CPDs which applies to 2020 which is sitting under 2021. So I'm not sure how that problem can be rectified. Um, no, there's no need for you to worry about that. If, it's, if you have four in 2020 and two in 2021, we do have a way of combining them. We will combine them for you and they will count towards your compliance. So I don't need to be worried. No, there's no need then for you to worry. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Maria Luis. Um, a good, good morning. Thank you again for this workshop. Um, I would like to inquire about the peer review and self review. Is, is there a, a restriction on how many self reviews or peer reviews, or can you use just self review, for instance? Do you have to have a peer review? Um, I thank you for the question. None of those is compulsory. Okay. It's up to you to do them just to make sure that there's somebody who is checking you and advising you, but it's it's not compulsory for you to do it. So there are no restrictions, uh, no requirements, no expectations at all. Okay, and the second, thank you for that. Uh, the second questions, I've got an archived item from last year that I was unable to complete uh, due to... Uh, not understanding the system, am I able to restore it and continue with that entry or should I just delete it or ignore uh, it? Or please start go completely? to it and, and check if it allows you to restore. If it does, please restore it. So it will be then counting towards the submission. That's correct. Yes. And then the final one, I just want to be perfectly clear on this. My sub, uh, Under my submissions, if it's in green and it's saying submitted for compliance with a, ch a check, is that then does that mean it has been submitted and I'm just waiting for uh, whatever? Uh, I just want to make sure is that the final step? Um, that, that is correct. Yes, ma'am. It is the final step for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Henry? Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
All right. Uh, I've got uh, two questions here. One, um, I've submitted, but it seems like they are archived. Uh, how do I uh, uh, send them for, for, for compliance? That's Did you one. submit in 2021 or in 2020? In, 20, in 2021. Okay, then it means they were erroneously archived. Please go under archives and restore. So I must just restore. Ne? Okay, I yes. see an option of restore. And yes. then the other issue is um, under dashboard, how do I submit? Because the, the, the options that you were showing us uh, on my side, it's not showing. Uh, uh, what the, it's blank. blank. I don't know if you'll be able to to uh, maybe take five minutes, go through the, especially the dashboard. Then uh, I think I'll be able to, to understand how to go about it in terms of submissions. Are you able okay, to assist? Let, let me quickly display my dashboard and then you can tell me how, how different is it from yours. Are you able to see my dashboard? Yes, yes, I'm able to. Okay, so my submissions, let's click on my submissions. My submissions are this ones. So, I'm so you, to, you, you, you so are I'm saying good. what's the problem? Uh, there is a, uh, and under public health, there is a tool that I say, that says, uh, I don't know if it's archived or what. It's, it's, there's what, you see, when, when you go to public health, the first uh, competence, you see that one. Go to a dashboard. Okay. You see there, yours, it says four. Mm -hmm. You see there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so mine, it shows two. That is there. Uh, and then, um, and then, uh, so how do you submit that? So you say I must go to my submissions. You don't, you don't submit anything from here. Here it shows you what you have already submitted or worked on. You see mine under entries by status. There's one that's saying awaiting submission. And there's okay. one that there's here where I have five saying submitted for compliance. So if perhaps um, then it's, if you go to my submissions, okay. you will be able to see here what's going on. You see mine here, this one is saying awaiting submission. And if I click on it, mm. I scroll down, then it gives me these options here. Are you able so to mine, see the, mine, the options? Mine is, blank. It said, it, mine is blank. It said CP submissions. It says for interns and BFAM students. If your result is not yet successful, click on the report, review, make necessary changes, reflection, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing here. That's very strange. Please send us your P number. Then we can be able to check what's going on on your site and assist. Okay, must I send an email or just post it there on the on the thing? You can post it post it there or send an email. It's all up to you. Okay, all right. So this is how to... it's for you. Thank oh. you very much. All right. Bye bye. Nonto. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I want to ask. One of my CPD is on archive and it says locked. So I can't submit it when it says locked. How do I unlock it? Mm. Please send us your P number. Let's see if we will be able to assist you with unlocking it for you. Okay, because it wasn't on archive and it went on archive uh, today. And then uh, last time I had six CPD submitted, but then I got an, a message saying non-compliance. But it does say submitted for compliance, but then I got a message for non-compliance. Is it saying all your six CPD activities are submitted for compliance? On the, on the status, it was saying that. And then today I sort of archived the one that says now locked that I can submit it back. Mm, please send us your P number, then we can be able to go through your profile and see if we will be able to help. Should I send it by email? Yes, please. And well, explain and care. explain what's what is going on. On customer care. No, there's an email address that we gave with the letter that came through. Okay, I'll check further. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Uh, Gracinda, I see your hand is still up. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. I've got another question. Um, when I submit, I've got the CPDs that uh, council will look into and it will be compliant for 2020. Now for the 2021, I don't have to do all of them by the 30th of June. I have until the end of the year. Is that correct? That is correct, ma'am, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Muzafa? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, um, I just wanted to find out uh, with respect to 2020, um, I was non-practicing for the year of 2020 and when I was doing my annual declaration, uh, I, I, I couldn't go back and, and edit it. So when I went back to change it, I assumed that it was uh, taken in to the annual declaration. So I'm not sure whether you are able to see it on your side. And what I wanted to find out is uh, uh, what what do I do for uh, for 2021? And by the end of June, uh, is it 2021 um, submissions that you require or 2020? Okay, I'm not sure if I understand you well. Are you saying that you had declared yourself as non-practicing in 2020? Yes. And for the whole year? Yes, for the whole year, and uh, I, I see that the request has come to submit. However, I am pra practicing in this year of 2021, and uh, that, that is what, what I'm asking. What should I do? In that case, then you only need to comply with the 2021 requirements and not the 2020 requirements. But I find it strange that we... Um, did we send you an email to say you don't comply with the 2020 requirements? Well, that's the email I think everyone received. If you can send us your P number and explain this, then we will check what's going on there. Because then if you were non-practicing in 2020, we shouldn't um, require of you to comply with the 2020 CPD requirements. You should only comply if you were designated as practicing. Okay, I'll send the email through to the specific email. We'll appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Maria Lewis? Uh, just another question in follow-up with the previous one. Once uh, it shows submitted for compliance, on the dashboard, under entries by status, when does it actually reflect there? Because on my dashboard, it's a, just a grey um, circle, but it does say submitted for compliance one. So is this something that takes time overnight or is, should it have been immediate or is there perhaps a problem on the system? Um, and that's very strange. It, it was supposed to say submitted for compliance. Uh, it, because it, you, if you no. can see here on mine, it is showing that Five were submitted for compliance, and I have one awaiting submission. So you're saying yours is not doing this? Uh, what mine is not doing, let me quickly try and do a screen print. It is, um, it does say, it does in a gray, um, in gray tells me that it was submitted for compliance. Let me just try and maybe send it via the, the chat. Um, there, um, there we go. Uh, it was sent by the chat. If you can just maybe have a look. So my under entries by status, it's it's saying submitted by for compliance, but it's not green like yours, or blue, blue like yours. Oh, you're saying the color. The color, yes, because it doesn't it doesn't reflect um, on it's because it's supposed now to show me how uh, the completion of the six that I've completed it like uh, for mm. instance to the right not available is all orange. But now it should, um, in my opinion, actually have uh, done a small little block like yours. No, I don't think I don't think the color uh, decides on anything because 
I see on mine there is where there is the, the awaiting for submission is in green and the submitted is in blue. But I don't think this color decides anything. I don't think if it's gray, it means it's actually not submitted. Mm, okay. Is it uh, could we just maybe confirm that but, somehow? But for people? peace of mind, you can send us your pin number, then we can confirm for you. Okay, just by email. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we will go through the um, questions in the chat box just to make sure that everyone is covered. Okay, I see that you are notified that a recording of this session will be available on Facebook at official SAPC and then it will make it easier for you there. And then there is a question there that says once you are classified as a non-practicing pharmacist, what needs to be done to be classified as a practicing pharmacist? Again, I think that I've addressed this by saying that there is an application form you apply there and pay the fee and we reset and then you complete your annual declaration. Um, okay, I see then they're saying, I've logged on to MS Teams for the CPD course. Okay, noted. What happens if we comply and submitted all the CPD requirements? I think we addressed that one. Um, okay, Nanto, we did address yours as well. How do we establish where we went wrong, please? If as far as we are concerned, we captured six according to the requirements. Uh, Jenny, please send us your P number to the email and also send us this so that we can go into your specific profile and check what went wrong there. Um, and then here they say, you can't really help with clarity if you have uploaded CPDs in 2020 and it, it does not appear, where can you go to upload? Again, we will check this using the pay number provided and then we will get back to you. I also completed everything for 2020. Why is it not acknowledged? If you can please, uh, Nerin, send us your pay number so that we can check. Uh, Abby, I think we have addressed this. Yes, you can choose one domain more than once. I submitted six CPD entries, but it's not recognized. Okay, we addressed that one. Uh, my status appears as practicing. Completed my six entries. Have been submitted for compliance. Please review my status. We will do so. Uh, I've completed my 60 PD through a third party accredited provider, but I cannot upload and I'm getting messages that I'm not compliant. Um, I'm not sure that I understand, but I think here, Peter, you are saying that you have attended perhaps for short courses and you did not upload this with on, on the CPD system. As a result, that would be why we do not know. You need to go in, log in, and complete your six CPD entries. Otherwise, we are never going to know what you have done with whom. We are required to submit CPD entries for 2020. How do we go about so they show as submissions for 2020? They will not show a submission for 2020 because they do show per date of submission. So they will be under 2021, but that is nothing for you to worry about. Do complete your six and then we will be able to allocate them correctly on our side. I've submitted six CPD and accidentally archived one. I think we did address this one. Um, I think I've responded to Peter. 
I'm also doing my CPD through positive impact and they don't import the information to the SAPC. And that is hence we have said that third party entries are not allowed. Unfortunately, you need to complete your own CPD activities, record them yourselves. Okay, we addressed the part about archived entries. Um, some of this personal data may be sensitive in an open market, especially when it is a niche idea. What assurance do we as pharmacists have that this information is not shared in a competitive market? I'm not sure if I understand this question. Barend, are you here to perhaps provide us with clarity of, of what you mean by, by sensitive? But what I can do, I can assure you that Council will not share your CPD entries with anybody at all. But um, please unmute yourself. Perhaps you can give us an idea of what you are explaining here. Okay, and then the uh, two CPDs I've submitted, which are for 2020. I think we addressed this one. Okay, and then there are questions from YouTube. The first one saying, what are the implications of being non-practicing? I think we have addressed this by saying, if you are a non-practicing pharmacist, you cannot be found practicing any of the scope of practice of a pharmacist. And then you also saying, how easy is it to move from non-practicing to practicing? You do that by applying and then we reset your status and then you complete your annual declaration. Why does council not follow what HPCSA requires for doctors? You will have more compliance if it is less complicated. In other words, you get CPD points instead of doing all this. Council is not requesting points of you because if you are doing points, it will then mean you are expected to spend more money registering for courses, but council does not mandate you to go and register for courses. They are saying that you need to go out there and learn the way you are comfortable, and then you reflect it on the system. Uh, may we submit all six CPDs via the two-step process? Unfortunately not, only three um, activities can be allowed via the two-step cycle. Can I use domain one, public health for six CPD activities? That is correct, yes, you can do so. It is with the submission that my problem lies. CPDs were done, submitted, but still shows orange at evaluation. So council wants us to, to go back to the CPD and rectify something, but how and where? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this one. But I hope what I had previously displayed will help you there. Um, I'm not understanding this part where you're saying 
the uh, orange. Uh, please add my entries by outcome. It still shows. I think this is what we dealt with earlier on. I emailed my CPD certificate to cancel. Will it count? No, it will not count. You need to log in and um, do the steps as I was showing you. And then another question says, my entries by outcome are still showing. Okay, I think we dealt with that. Um, okay, Ms. Lina, I think we dealt with yours. If we have 12 CPD, will half be allocated for 2020? and the other half be allocated for 2021. This will only apply if you have submitted your CPD activities in 2021 and they were submitted during the grace period. Then six will be allocated to 2020 and six will be allocated to 2021. But if you submitted 12 CPD activities in 2020, then they will not be carried forward, unfortunately. I have done six this year, but I also re-uploaded six based on CPD done last year. Since Council says mine and reflecting, although I've done them, I want to make sure that 2020 work doesn't reflect for 2021. Um, Carlin, if I understand you well, you are saying you now have 12 CPD activities that you submitted in 2021, and this will mean that six will count for compliance for 2020 and six counts for 2021. And then another question says, please also confirm via email if my entries are acceptable, and if not, Please then indicate what has to be rectified since my entries are still not showing up. Um, okay, if, if you can please send us your PIN number, then we can check your individual profile to just see what's going on there. I don't have access to a speaker. I tried to submit two CPDs from 2020 that were stuck at evaluation stage. I'm still receiving the same error, could not create, failed to update. How will I then submit by the 30th of June? Um, Semi, if you can please give us your P number, then we can see if we will be able to assist you there, but also check your internet settings if that, that is not what is disabling you to submit. Hi all, I need to leave now. Oh, okay, I have another meeting, thank you. When I entered the information for 2021, the system states asked me if I'm a registered pharmacist. I confirm I'm yet. The system has a red tick. Uh, Gracinda, if you can please. Oh, I see we have your P number there. We will go into your system and check what's going on there. Good day. I submitted six CPDs in 2020. On the dashboard, it shows that they have submitted for compliance, but I have received a notification that I'm not compliant. Please assist. We will check and we will be able to assist. Thank you so much. Then let's see, we have hands up. Maria Luis. Uh, no, sorry, I must have pressed it accidentally. Thank you, I'm up to date with everything now. Okay, Mosefa. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, oh, yes, uh, I wanted to find out, is there a specific email do we, that we send our queries to? I've been trying to locate it uh, in the email, I couldn't find it. Um, Natalie, please put in the pharmacy CPD email address on the chat box. They will put it for us on the chat box so that you can be able to copy and use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Henry? 
Hello. Uh, just a quick one. I wanted to find out if uh, there are, there's a four step and there's a two step. Um, so can I mix and match those two if I want to do the four step or there has to be a um, a, 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 four, a what do you call a uniform standard of um, putting the CPDs? Can I do four the four steps and then later on say the other two I'm gonna do the two step. Yes, Easy. you can do that. It's it's all up to you. But just note that on the two-step one, only a maximum of three is allowed. On the four-step one, you can do as much as you want, but there's no problem if you mix them up. Oh, okay. So they will appear on the dashboard of uh, which ones I've submitted, four-step or two-step, or it doesn't matter. It that is correct, be. yes. It will show on our site. Which ones were the three steps and which ones were the so which ones were the four steps and which one were the two steps? They will show, oh, but I think so uh, you can you can submit them. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you so much. Then. All right, thank you so much. Sir. Uh, Ms. If I see your hand is still up. Colleagues, thank you very much. I just want to ask if there are further questions, please feel free to do so. Also check on the chat box, the email address has been provided and also the links to the YouTube channel, to the Facebook, and also to where you are able to see the submissions using the two-step and also using the four-step and all the guidance that we have provided there on the YouTube channel for you. Thank you very much for joining us in this session. We really appreciate, we will attend to all your queries and try and get back to all of you. We appreciate, we do understand that you are having busy schedules and don't really have time uh, to do any other thing, but we do appreciate that you have spent um, more than two hours with us. Thank you very, very much. Um, in the absence of more questions and discussions, then we will adjourn this training. You are much appreciated and all the best with your compliance. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye now. Thank you. Thank you.